All right. Hi, guys, and um, it's Kyle A here from my place. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to quickly go through uh, basics of level design. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through uh, what this is. This is modular geometry at its most basic. Now, as I... Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly explain what modular geometry is by making a corridor. Now, I don't have to say anything, but I will. When you're building a level, modular geometry is the way to go because the, th the good thing is, the good thing is you can create a level and if changes need to be made, then they can be made. So if you're looking for an example of modular geometry, look at Super Mario, the 1985 version. Yeah, it's Super Mario Land. And you'll see that a lot of the blocks sort of repeat themselves. And I'm not sure if that was coincidental or what, but that is a prime example of using modular geometry. Now, here we go. We are where I need to be. Now, this gap in the wall here can be filled in by anything. It can be filled in by my doorway here, or this wall, or for some strange reason, reason, if I want, I can put a floor there, sideways. So, the first thing is, alright, the original plan, let's just say, was to make this a narrow corridor, just one way. But, one day, the director comes in and he or she asks me to, instead of having just this one area here, have it branching off. I can delete that, because it's modular geometry duplicate this wall, drag it across, rotate it. Now, I'm using Unity, but the same principles apply uh, to any game engine that you're using, whether it be Unreal, uh, Blender Game Engine, or Game Maker, or if you're using your own, um, the same principles apply, which is why I prefer level design over coding. Um, now, all of a sudden, here, yeah, I've got a T-junction where sort of it can lead off into another room or into another corridor. And that's where um, modular geometry really comes in handy. Why I choose to do that is because, if, just like I showed you, if a change needs to be made, it can be made. Now, uh, a colleague of mine... He was at one point my teacher, he still sort of is, takes, still gets me, <laughs> still owns me in terms of art, but said, what about repeating textures? Now, uh, you can avoid that with uh, modular geometry. It's possible using uh, grunge maps, uh, dirt maps, uh, ranging specular levels. Um, if you're making a brick wall, that's pretty easy. You can get the basic texture, normal map, and ambient occlusion map, but on top of that, you can add things in like moss, dirt, uh, extra little cracks, things like that, even graffiti. That sort of breaks the texture. And so, even if you're making a wall that's 20 of these, which is, by the way, 4 meters across, 4 meters down, you can have 20 of those walls lined up next to each other, and it'll still be fine. Okay, now... I've taken you through the basics of what modular geometry is. Now let's get actu let's actually get into uh, creating a level. So we'll go over to this project here, the encounter area. Now, quick note, before you even begin to make the pieces of your level, or at least lay them out in your game engine, use a floor plan. Use a floor plan because it will make your life easier. And on top of that, if you're making a game that's somewhat realistic like a Call of Duty game or um, or even Bioshock or something like that Battlefield or whatever use real life references uh, real life reference for anything in games or film can really help you out um, especially with things like lighting um, which I won't actually go through uh, for this first part but I will go through later alright back to the level now here this is uh, designed to be a multiplayer map, um, a small multiplayer map. Uh, here we have like a spawn point at either end. We have this courtyard here in the middle. 
which will basically serve as our main combat zone and we have corridors here and here now we have doorways that lead into those corridors as well one here one here this one here this one here this one here and here hidden from our current view is this doorway here <coughs> excuse me um but you can see how it's kind of boring uh it's flat and if like me you're trying to get diamond camo for the sniper rifles uh, then obviously you want to be able to see and sort of have a vantage point in your level. Right now as it stands, this level has no vantage point. You can't line up a shot without getting shot up first. Wow, how many times did I say shot in that? But anyway, so guns like sniper rifles and rocket launchers, you really do want to get up higher. Or at least have a window which you can shoot from. Um, which sort of says, uh, okay, this level really isn't for that. I don't think any, uh, level nowadays is made like that. I don't think any levels, you know, in the older generation, sorry, <laughs> in older generation games were designed like this. I'm not really sure. Um, so we'll move on from that example. In this example, yay, it looks better. We have windows. I got rid of a few doors, which is fine, but we have windows here. Still quite symmetrical, as you can notice, uh, as you can see. Uh, in the previous example, same thing. It was pretty symmetrical, even on all sides. And in the courtyard, you can see that as well. We have these blocks here. Now, remember, this is a, a grey box. Uh, it's not supposed to be... It's not supposed to look pretty or anything. Um, it's just supposed to be an approximation of what the final level will look like. Now you can see here that, yeah, okay, you can use these blocks as a uh, cover if you've played games like Uncharted or Mass Effect, but the thing is, it's symmetrical, it's boring, and you really don't want that. It's symmetrical, the whole courtyard is symmetrical. Sometimes you want that, but for the most part, it sort of comes off as really insanely boring. But, the plus side, on the plus side here, we've got windows, which snipers and guys with rocket launchers can use. Um... And they don't have to worry about being, you know, actually in the main combat area to be able to get a shot. But we still haven't satisfied the whole vantage point thing. What can we do for that? Obviously, it would be to make another level. Make a, another level with another floor. Second floor here. Windows again, doors. And I've brought back the original uh, door setup. Uh, it's slightly different now, but... Uh, you sort of get it. Now, we've in the courtyard as well, we've sort of gotten rid of the whole uniform setup. As you can see, there are sort of blocks here and there, and I've thrown in a few fountains as well. Now, I would build this in real time, except the thing is, uh, it takes a while to uh, build a level, as you might imagine. Uh, but it's fine. Uh, I like doing that. Um, the big improvement here is that we now have a second floor which snipers and guys with rocket launchers can use. Now, apologies, I was supposed to put in pillars, supporting pillars for the balcony, but I forgot to put that in, as well as guard railing. Um, so, it's kind of half complete. Now, you'll notice I don't have ceilings, and that's for good reason, because I don't want to have ceilings. It's not part of my uh, tutorial for now. And you can see here, uh, there's, there's a vantage point here, there, 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 and over here. Now you can see that it's a little bit less uniform, and it sort of looks and feels different altogether. Still the same layout, you know, we've got the two spawn points, we've got the main corridor, uh, sorry, the main courtyard and the co two corridors on each end, but it looks much more different. And if you play the level, uh, if you make a level sort of like the first example that we had and played it, it would feel very different to if you played this level. Now, the challenge for you guys, now that I've taught you the real simple basics of level design is make a level using the three main parts of this. A wall, one wall, one doorway, and one floor. If you can make a, vi if you can make a really good level using just those parts, those three parts, then 
you can make a level just like this and even better. So, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something from it. And remember, before you even start building anything in 3D, make sure you have a floor plan. I'll see you next week where we will go through uh, building a puzzle platformer level because somebody asked. And um, please subscribe and like this video so that I can make more. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you then. Bye.